Hello and welcome to the very first proper official App Spy live stream on Twitch. I am James Gilmore, editor of App Spy. Above me, as you look at me, is Mr. Peter Willington. Hello, hello, he, hello. He's, he's from Pocket Gamer and App, App Spy as well, and he's uh, eating an orange. Uh, yes, I am. It's delicious. It's actually it's a tangerine. I'll have you know. So. Oh, all right. If we're going to get specific, he's a he's a pro. We all run on fruit now. Now this game we're about to play, as you can see here, we're playing out there. This was released last week, I think it was, and it is a sort of randomly generated rogue-like, almost space exploration sim, which mm -hmm. all sounds like a, a kind of a big explanation for what it is. But uh, I played it a little bit last week. Um, but we're starting from the very top here, so this is from the very beginning, uh, and we're going to explore some deep space. Now, Whoa. we're in the 22nd century, so the screen says mankind has been trying to find resources beyond the exhausted planet. And we haven't even reached the limits of our solar system, so here's a man in a little uh, cryogenic Casey thing. It's this, have, you, have you seen this yet, Peter? Have you seen any uh, of it? Yes, uh, I, I've sort of... So he's in a little cryogenic... Uh, he looks. He looks all cold. Bless him. <laughs> yes. He? Yes, he does. He's a chilly yeah. fellow. Um, yeah. But it's the usual sci-fi stuff. To be honest with you, it's you know you lost space. Got to find your way and not get eaten by aliens. Here's our ship, um, and here's a pretty title screen. Isn't it nice? Um, now, if you are watching us, by all means, join in. Add questions, like chuck us little inquiries or whatever. You've got the comment section somewhere on Twitch. Um, and you can just go ahead and ask us what you like. And uh, mm -hmm. even tell me what to do, because you may have played this more than me. I, I don't know. Tell us what I'm doing wrong mm. with relish. Okay, so I'm being shown my star chart here. And uh, this is where my ship is at the beginning. So, what do I need to do? I need to go somewhere, first things first. This is the overall star chart I've got of the game, which shows me there's my space station. I can fly there. It'll take a certain amount of fuel or a certain amount of uh, oxygen or whatever whenever I make a journey. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually see that by plotting where you want to go. Here's a yellow dwarf I can travel to if I really want to. Um, I did the tutorial briefly before. The way that it works, let's have a look at the ship. This is my ship. Like FTL, in the way that it shows you kind of a cross section and shows you the people running around inside mm. this doesn't do that this shows you the elements of the bits that make up your ship mm. it's it's quite sort of sci-fi in a good way so as you can see i've got like helium or helios or someone corrected me on this hydrogen it's h is hydrogen not helium it's basically like an a periodic table inside the ship this is this, sorry periodic table <laughs> I, I'm, I'm i'm come on i play games for a living what what do you what, what, you're what already, you lost. Well, already lost well well in a scientific way, it shows you the elements that make up each bit of the ship and how you can use them. In a very basic way, it shows you, like, hydrogen's basically it's fuel. Right, okay, right? okay. So if I take this fuel cluster and drag it into maintenance, then boom, as you can see, it tops up my fuel gauge, like that, you see? I've also got an oxygen gauge and a hull gauge. Hull is the, like this defensive capabilities. And uh, if you look on the cargo list here, you can see there's a little symbol in the uh, hydrogen with a little kind of... You know, with the atoms circling a, a electron, circling an atom or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also a little fan next to the oxygen symbol here, as okay. you can see up top. And uh, little three dots with the FE. I don't know what that is. Failium? Failium? I, I don't really know. Um, but they all work. I can drag them to the maintenance area and replenish my stuff. So that's the way that works. So first thing to do, you're not really given any guidance. You just have to go and explore. So... Let's say I can go to this yellow dwarf, but it'll cost me 16 uh, fuel and 5 oxygen. I've got 100 of each. We might as well go there. Might as well start somewhere. Let's now you travel. Say, now, you say, you say yellow dwarf. This I is do. a This is a, a sort of a planetary body that we're talking about, not some sort of like... Well, yellow uh, dwarf is a star. Okay, it? right. Okay. A red, right. a red dwarf is a star that's just on the edge of death and about to explode or implode. Um, a yellow one is, I suspect, yellower. It's nearly there? Nearly there? I, I don't know, something like that. All right. Okay, so I've just done a first little warp, and it tells me that when space folds, my ship accelerates to a to C velocity. I don't know what that is. The universe contracts. Basically, it's saying I'm going through hyperspace uh, cool. in, in a pretty description. So I've just done that, and now I am at my first little uh, mini galaxy thingy. My little solar system, sorry. So I've got my star here the yellow dwarf, which is rich in fuel, but has a dangerous atmosphere. So if I travel there, then it will start mashing up my hull, which is which is dangerous. Uh, I've got a rocky planet, which is rich in ore, 
and a gas giant, which is rich in fuel. And so I now need to go there and grab stuff from it, or, you know, get gather more fuel or gather more resources, and then move on my way. I might run into aliens. I might find absolutely nothing. You don't really know. The game itself is kind of a... Uh... <laughs> I was going to say, it's rogue. It's a roguelike game, which means it's got permadeath and you can die at any moment. And I, my very first planet, I hit, hit the, sh the button and it goes, Damn, my engines have just exploded. I hope I can fix them, otherwise I am dead. Good, yeah, great, okay. I'm off to this a crack and start. Yeah, this is a good game to start the whole twitching <laughs> thing, isn't it? We're just going to show ourselves up now. Uh, okay. Well, no, this is what the game is about. It's randomly generated every time, so you don't know what's going to happen. Oh, mm. FE is iron. Of course it is, silly me. An equipment has been destroyed. That's bad English for a start, but it has. The interplanetary <laughs> reactor has been destroyed. But I've gathered, I've, I've gathered some fair. So I'm going to go down into the ship and see what the problem is. Uh, what's been destroyed? Interplanetary reactor. I can't see it. That's the space folder. I'm going to have a look at what I've got. A telescope. I've got a drill. A hydrogen probe. Uh, Sounds. Uh, and that's it. Look. Yep. So uh, it doesn't. I don't. I can't see the item that I've apparently lost. It tells me that whatever it is has been ex exploded. But I don't know how to fix it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll learn. Oh, here you go. We'll this, is, this is the interplanetary reactor. I need to craft a new one, basically. So I've got some iron. It'll take me three, and the equipment has been installed. There. Done it. So technically, hopefully, that should be all right, and I'm now no longer going to blow up all over space. Phew. I know, right? Result. That's, that's yeah, that is a, that's a vast <laughs> improvement. Okay. I'm going to go uh, and orbit this planet now, try and do it successfully. So there you go, I've done so, you can see it's knocked a bunch of my fuel, my oxygen and my hull. Um, but I'm there, I have I have appeared around the planet. Now I'm going to... I don't think I have the scanners yet. No, I need to install a geoscan, but I'm going to send a probe out. And that's going to dig into the planet, launch probe, and tell me if I've got any uh, gear, any ore or something like that that I can gather from it. What have I got? I've got nine helium, no, oh, hydrogen, helium. Yeah, nine helium, a bunch of hydrogen, and a bunch more hydrogen. So that's a result. Finish. Yeah, okay, sweet. Let's cool. go back to the main the main image. I'm going to go to the next planet now and see what's on that. Go for it. Okay, you knocked off fuel and oxygen and hull. We've appeared again. Let's... Oh, I can land on this one. Shall I land, Peter? Do I dare? Um, have you got enough red shirts with you? <laughs> that is that is the question, isn't it? I need to know whether I have enough expendable <laughs> red shirts. Do you know, I, I was, so I was watching Star Trek Next Generation the other day because I'm cool like that, and uh, you are, you sort are of rewatching cool. it, I should say. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that there's a lot more people with red shirts that are actually part of the crew that aren't just like people who get sent down to die. And actually, in Next Gen, mm -hmm. if you've got a yellow shirt on, you're way more likely to die. Really? Are you telling me that the myth is untrue all this well, time? Well, ah, no, but I think I think the myth is true. Well, the, the sort of like legend of it is true legend, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, but you know, I think that whole thing about it is true for for the the original series, the, the Kirk series, which was rubbish. But for the next gen Ooh. series, I don't think it is true. I know, come get me in. Ooh, but like, shots fired. <laughs> but I think that's. I think I think they they must have done that on purpose because Picard's wearing it red shirt like all the time oh, that's yeah that's true actually I hadn't considered and that it's like a giant target for the original series <laughs> like, you know right I'm going to replenish some stuff now I've just added some uh, more fuel that what I've got I'm going to stock up on oxygen as well because I've been running low my hull's okay I am going to quickly run out of fuel though if I'm not careful okay now if that happens I can technically take existing components I have and as you can see dismantle them this gives me the option to break them down into component parts and then, you know, repurpose those parts to either make other things or, uh, you know, save my ship. For example, if I were to, you know, dismantle the drill, I'll get an extra bit of fuel. Uh, sorry, a bit of iron that I can use uh, in another part of the ship if I want to. Um, at the moment, what I really need is fuel, though, because I haven't got okay. very much. Let's go back. Now, we were saying before this is a roguelike game and the idea is that you just keep pushing forward and uh, chances are you'll die. Like, okay. horribly, that's just what happens, and then you go back and you sort of try again, but each game you play, each time you do it, something different will happen. It's never a kind of prescripted plot or playthrough or anything. So, what I'm going to do now is jump to another yellow dwarf. 
Which so, is... so is the game endless then? Like, I, I know, I think there is a conclusion. I think technically there is a way. I'm just doing hyperspace stuff now. Looks well cool. Um, I think there is an actual conclusion to the game. Uh, and there's sort of three, I think there's three different endings to it. There's like a plot line you can play through, but in terms of the order in which things plays out and the type of aliens you encounter and stuff, it's different every time. Right. So apparently I'm working on, it says I'm working on my alien right now. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure how to take that. Um, I, well, uh, I would take it with a pinch of PG. Oh, oh. Uh, do you mean language? Yeah, language. Oh, he's right. working on his alien. Lang it's like, oh, yeah. language. Not he's a... writing stuff on the walls of his craft with a piece of burnt carbon like a caveman. Right, not not in a sort of... Uh, uh, mm. No, okay, good. <laughs> uh, good, yes, excellent, good. I'm yeah, glad exactly. we're working on our alien. Okay, so I've, I've now got... To, I'm going to fly into this rocky planet. It's rich in metallic ore. Oh, rich in fuel. I need this. I'm going to this uh, gas giant over here. It's got loads of fuel. We should probably explain, people, that uh, if you're watching mm. this, I am... In a different place from Peter. Peter is not sat alongside me. He is uh, miles away in Bristol while I'm down in Bournemouth in the UK. Uh, so he can see what you guys see in real time as, as, as the stream flies out. But there's about a 20 second lag so he's kind of slightly in the past. Some might say that I'm playing the the sort of uh, the the community aspect. I'm, uh, I'm So I want basically I want you to get in touch with me in the chat room uh, with your questions. Essentially, you can ask us anything you like about this game and we will tell you and we'll try it out. If you've got suggestions as to what we should be doing next, then you can sort of go, hey, don't stop going down there, you idiot, because you'll die. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do, can that. do that as well. So uh, chat room, uh, ask questions and uh, and we will, uh, we, we will try and figure them out live. Yeah. Uh, which is the best way of figuring things out rather than like uh, sitting back. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I'm yeah. going to stock up now. I did get a bit of fuel from that, so I'm going to drag that in. Ooh, yeah, good solid bit of fuel, awesome. And some more oxygen as well, that goes in there. Uh, and what have I got, anything for the hull? Yes, I do, for the hull here. So this is good, this is good. That planet was uh, fruitful. I've got loads of stuff. Marvelous. Right, let's back out of this bad boy. Um, back to the star chart and have a look. See, I'm gonna just pan down a little bit here. This shows you all the stars that are available. And as you can see, there's a big red arrow down here at the bottom, which is pointing off the way. This is the overall point of the game, is you're supposed to find your way home. So that's inevitably what I'm going to try and do. But I'm going to do it one star at a time in sort of sensible organised fashion. Okay. This is me. I'm, warp I'm warping off to this new planet now. And... Day 27, I can't believe my eyes! There's something here that disproves all known scientific theories. A naked singularity! Oof, this is all getting a bit... Uh, it's a bit raunch, isn't it? Sci-fi. Sexy sci-fi. Naked oh. singularity. Yeah. Mm. Apparently, it means that space and time bend together endlessly like a black hole, but the phenomenon is visible from the outside and opens like a big, bright tunnel. <gasps> I could dive into it and emerge back far away. But I've seen stuff like that on the internet. Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah. <laughs> but would it be wise? It's oh. asking me. Basically, do I dive into this white black hole thing, oh. or not? Mm, okay. Well, while uh, while we're while we're having a think, and while the uh, the, the the chat room can let us know, uh, we do have a question. Okay. So, uh, uh, sort of similar question to what I asked earlier. Like, is there an end outside of death? I think that's what we're trying to... That's from Fur and Ray. Um, that, I think that's what we're trying to figure out yeah. at the moment. Isn't from what it? I like, understand, there is actually a plot line where you find your way home eventually. The game will end with a conclusion. Right. I think there are three different conclusions. But the way that you get there will differ every single time you play so through. So death is the most sort of normal ending, I <laughs> yeah. suppose. As with all roguelikes, you generally die and then start again a bit. So, um, okay. Right, I think I think the only way the only way forward is to, d to dive. I think okay, we're going to have we'll to go dive. for it. Dive then. Here we go. I fly into oh. the singularity. Go. The tunnel pushes me at top speed in an unknown direction, and I find myself flying into the void, far from everything. Not great, Modern but speed. could have been worse. Ah. Yep. Oh. oh no. I've been warped out there. Whoa. 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 I've just I've just been shunted off the entire star map, and I'm now sitting on the edge of the big swirly black hole thing, and I apparently am in just 
I'm nowhere. I'm in complete, like, deep space. Yeah, someone's just voyaged you. <laughs> I have actually... I am now Captain Janeway. <laughs> which, which, which sucks, because I hate Captain Janeway. Oh, no. She's right. the worst. No, that's terrible. No, Captain Janeway was fantastic. What? She was... She are you arguing? Are you arguing for argument's sake now? Are you actually serious? No, she was stern. She was all about. She was basically the perfect blend of Picard and Kirk. Oh right? no! Kirk no, she she was an in. annoying Canadian. No, right? he no. Kirk rushed in too much. Picard laid back a bit too much, and also smacked into Wesley a little bit too often for my liking. But Janeway, <laughs> Janeway was abuse. fair. She was harsh. And she was getting everyone home. Well, Brilliant. hang on, I'm, I'm orbiting the black hole, I'm going to have to go back in there now, because it's the only way to go. I've got to go back, and it'll okay. chuck me somewhere else. But, um, oh, what? A wormhole generator isn't installed, so I can't get back. Uh, okay, right, let's try and install a wormhole generator. This isn't I, I, can't, I can't even do that. Telescape hydrogen probe into planetary reactor? That's not in my options. Right. Oh, oh this is mad. Telescope, okay. drill... Space or could folder. you just could you just enter? Could, I mean, what, so what happens if you do enter the black hole? Is that is that what we're? Well, that's what I was trying to do. But I think okay. in order to go in there, I need to have a some kind of generator thingy. Okay, so we, we enter we the black hole. Wormhole generator is not installed. Okay, so says. we need to we need to grab one of them then. Wormhole generator. <laughs> grab one of them. Uh, has anyone got one of those? Just like, where'd you get one of those? Oh no! Oh, like... Wait, 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 wait! It's okay. okay. I was hanging around the the mouth of the the black yeah. hole, but now I've gone back into another star chart. Ooh. Oh, this is cool. I'm, I'm in a whole new bit of space. This is well exciting. Right, I'm going down here. There's a yellow dwarf here. Yeah, I need to, I need to travel quite quick. I don't have much fuel left, so I'm going to go there to that yellow dwarf. Okay. This is fun. This is, uh, like, <laughs> it, it, in, a, in a sort of turn-based script, text-based sort of way, like, I don't know what's coming next. I really don't know what's going to happen. for me, like, from what from what I've sort of seen and played so far, it does, it feels like a, it, it feels like a t choose your own adventure, but with, but with, like, strategy bits. Like, it, if, like, with the bits from Mass Effect where you're looking at the galaxy. Which uh, is map. perhaps why it's resonating so strongly with me, because I, I, have a bit of a thing for Mass Effect. I'm a huge Mass Effect. Fan. Do you know what? I'm playing through that at the moment, and oh, I've, really? had to, I've had to I've had to do something absolutely shameful and knock it down to easy. I'm playing the original Mass Effect, and really? uh, yeah, I've had to because I don't know if it's I don't know if I'm rubbish at games or I was in the wrong area too early or something mm. like that. But <laughs> it just I, oh, I came that the, okay. it will be the latter with Mass Effect. If you do tend to like if you bust out from the Citadel the first time you leave the Citadel, yeah. and then if you charge forward to like and then accidentally run into the planet where the matriarch Benezia is. Yeah, that's where I went. Yeah, then you will get your ass handed to you. Right. You need to go around and do a bit more exploration first. Right. I would that's, advise. Yeah, I had to. Yeah, I busted down to easy instead because I was just like, I'm not having Deanna Troy beat me every five minutes. <laughs> yes, and that was cute, wasn't it? The, the matriarch is, is the Mariana Sirtis, the Deanna Troy. Right, I've just appeared at a space station. It's got a floating reactor core thing, a cube, that looks a little bit like the middle of the Death Star, only if there was a Rubik's Cube floating in the middle of it. Right, so nothing... <laughs> nothing but, like the Death Star. <laughs> shut up! <laughs> it's allowed me to refuel at any rate, so I can now... Uh, I'm up to full fuel, and oxygen hull are okay. So I'm going to back out of that. That was successful. To be honest with you, I have survived slightly longer than I thought I would. I was really expecting to just, like, go to the first planet and say, you have encountered a giant praying mantis. Yeah. It eats you. Munch. The end. Yeah. And that was going to be it. Yeah. See, look, I'm even doing the, Chica I'm doing the Janeway voice now. Warp speed, Mr. Cote. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's why yeah. I could. She sounds, she sounds like Terence and Philip. If you watch that thing, she sounds... She, I'm sure she's Canadian. I don't know. I haven't had that confirmed. But I, I bet you she is Canadian she sounds it. No. She, she's... Is she? I bet she is. Right. right to okay, the now. Go on. I, to the internet. I have found a planet with a breathable atmosphere. This okay. Is, this is my first, what I suppose you would class... would Star Trek would class as an M3 planet. Okay. Uh, one with a breathable ox, uh, atmosphere. So I am. I, I want to scan, but I still don't have a geo scan. Actually, can I can I build a geo scan? Is that in my list of things? Of my technologies? No. <laughs> I I don't have a geo scan, and, and apparently I have no way to build one. Oh well. I'm just gonna have to land. I'm gonna have to just suck it up. Right here we go. Go on. Are you ready to land on it? I am ready. Let's go down and explore. 
The breathable atmosphere of this planet has allowed me to restore my oxygen supply. Fantastic. That's really okay. good. Now, I can either drill, take off, or encounter life. <laughs> which <laughs> which sounds like... like a mantra, doesn't it? Do you wish to encounter life every day? Mm, mm, yeah, really I like engage life. with it, you know. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'm doing pretty well for fuel and oxygen. Shall we encounter some life? Uh, yeah, please encounter some life. That'd All right, then. Here we go. Are we ready? Quapa. I found a twig! <laughs> right. I suppose Whoa. that is technically life. I found a talking twig. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Right, okay, so what's happened is I've now been... <laughs> this is the first time this has happened. So, I've... I, as you can see, there's an image of a twig with little twiggy arms either side yeah. of him, right? Okay. And he's speaking to me. And he's speaking... Agama abrile blah, blah, kima. It's, it's like a bunch of, you know, nonsense letters, right? Yeah. Uh, which I don't understand. I don't know if there's a way to understand it. Like, maybe it's pig Latin or something. But I right. don't know. Um, okay. Right. And I have two options. It's asking me a question, the twig. And I can either approve or disapprove. Now, uh, because because I don't understand the language, this is that thing where you walk into a you know a foreign country and someone asks you a question and you go, uh, I don't I know whether smile. you're calling me a dick or whether you're offering me something really yummy. Mm. So I can either go, yeah, or no. Okay, well, he, I mean, he's a... Okay, so... People like positive people, right? Even twigs like positive people. So let's uh, let's be positive. I feel like we should be positive. Yeah? Okay. All right, then. Well, I'm going to approve it. And let's see what they say. Oh. He's given me a, a three-word response. And then another two-line response. And says the alien doesn't want to talk anymore. <laughs> Whatever. Don't, don't, don't surround yourself with negative people. <laughs> Come on. Oh, all right. Oh, so I've 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 learned a new word. Riflethithithith means star. Oh, this okay. is cool. So uh, presumably, the more I talk to the alien entities, the more I understand them, and um. gradually, gradually, I'll like learn their language, and these messages will become a lot clearer in the future. Are all the aliens twigs? I I doubt it. <laughs> right, I'm gonna drill this planet anyway. I'm gonna I can up and down. Sorry, you can ra raise and lower the drill depth for each of these. So. Uh, if I want to drill deeper, I can. I might get some more stuff, but I'll also use up more fuel in the process. So I'm going to choose seven for this one. Oh, wow. I got loads of stuff. Awesome. I am rich, the game center says. Dig some gold. I found gold. I found AU. A I, I know AU is gold. I know that much. Right. So, okay. Every time you find these elements, they appear on the left-hand side of the screen, and you can choose which ones you want to drag onto your ship. You have a limited number of slots... So you have to be careful what, what you drag and what you don't. So I'm going to drag that in there. I'm going to have CU is bronze. I, that's probably not even an element. Bronze is a, a mixture of different metals, isn't it? Bronze. I don't know. I'm completely science ignorant, clearly. <laughs> anyway, I've dragged all my stuff onto my ship. Uh, and I think mission accomplished there. We've made first contact. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, of course we have. Yeah, of course. That's awesome. So now we know that aliens exist. Yes. Yes, and right. they're and they're twigs, unfriendly twigs. Unfriendly twigs. Wouldn't that well, be disappointing if that was real life? What if, if if first contact was made and it turned out to be like a sycamore tree? Yeah, like there there was a while back where NASA, I think it was NASA, thought that they'd found like bacterial life on Mars. Yeah, and everyone was like, yeah, and then the real the cold hard reality of it, which was like, ah, we wanted people we could talk with and. Yeah, Hang we did, we kind of wanted we wanted monsters really, do, didn't we? Do mind melds and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like well, we don't want monsters. I, I I wouldn't mind like a Babylon Five situation. That would be fine. Okay. Where it was like half of them were all creepy, creepy monsters. Some of them were spiders, and, and they then, and they only lasted for five series and then vanished. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Babylon Zoo. Uh, Babylon Zoo. That's not, that's not <laughs> Babylon Five. Babylon Zoo was that. Uh, Babylon Zoo was the um, uh, short-lived band featuring Jazz Man. Uh, who did that single Spaceman. Do you remember that song? Um, I'm going to say Space no Man. because otherwise <laughs> people realise that I'm old. That was my first that was the first CD I ever got. Amazing. Actually it was a tape. That was the first album, uh, album I ever got. It was on tape. Amazing. This is Amazing. extremely informative. This is, this is telling me an awful 
awful yeah. lot. Yeah. So I've got a bunch of fuel now. I'm, I'm sorted okay. for fuel and oxygen. I'm a little bit screwed for my hull, though. Um, yeah, what I've taken, happened there? I've taken some damage. We're just, just approaching planets, just like going through the atmosphere, and especially if it's a like a sun or something. Uh, just the act of doing that knackers you your ship a bit. Right. I dinged it, yeah. I did a three-point turn on the way out, and I, and I knocked it. Oh, sorry. Oops. Oopsie. We're going to leave that gas giant because I don't really need more fuel. I've got loads of fuel. It's the hull that I'm worried about. So let's jump back to the star map and I'm going to head uh, what appears to be like sort of southeast. Uh, but there's no such thing as southeast in space. I'm going to a neutron star. Oh, it's out of reach. Oh, oh my word. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. So presumably... The star is out of reach. There's a, a green circle that sits around my starship, which presumably shows like the the radius, mm. uh, which is determined by the distance I can actually travel, uh. presumably before I run out of fuel. And I've got full fuel, but I can't get to this star. Well, then you've got to have... You'll have to search for, on other planets for more fuel and for... Maybe, well, maybe no. to improve your capacity. Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, let me just... I'm on 98 fuel. If I top up to 100, perhaps I can perhaps I can make it just to the end there. Let me whack it down. I'm 100 fuel now. Let's go back to the star map. No, it's out of reach. It only it says it only takes 24 fuels in order to go there, but apparently it's like beyond the limits of my craft or something. It's too much. Yeah, I can't travel to any of these systems. This is rubbish. Okay, so the, my only option is that one star system that I'm located in here. I guess I can't remember which ones I went. I visited now. Have I visited all of these? Ooh. Maybe you can mine places like multiple times. Possibly. I'm going to launch a probe here and see what happens. Okay. It's pulled out some more fuel and stuff. That's great. Can I can I stack fuel? I, t I can stack fuel. Fantastic. It doesn't use up any extra. You, know, you, can stack fuel. you can stack elements like if it takes up one square for example if you've got if you've got a square filled with helium or hydrogen or whatever you can if you find more you can drag it into the same square and it'll smart you'll stack it rather than having to use up a whole extra square which is very mm. very useful all right finish um so first thing i'm going to do now i'm going to try and look at ways of improving the ship because i need to travel further this is not good okay the only thing i can craft here is cryonics Cryonics, I don't have enough resource for it. What is it? Cryonics is a device that allows you to spend time in frozen stasis to make the jump from Earth to Jupiter. Maybe I need to have a cryonics chamber in order to make it that Go far. On, have a cryonics. Go on. Problem is, I Let's need some. Cryonics. I need some what I think is silver hmm. in order to make it, and I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Which... I like the idea that you're going to go to like some space vendor and say. Hey, yeah, um, have you got any silver, I well, guess? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, kind of. I mean, let me, st I can stack this oxygen, that frees up a little bit of space. What's, um, what's the element? CU? No, oh, SI. SI element. I mean, that's selenium or silver. You can be, tell you what, you... Silicon. Silicon, oh, that makes more sense. See, if we silver. Were, if stayed in school and were smarter, then uh, we'd remember that. Well, then, I, then I wouldn't be a games journalist. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I'd be doing a proper job somewhere. Yeah. Okay, um, now, the other option is I can dismantle another thing I have in order to make it. I can technically dismantle my space folder, or I could dismantle my hydrogen probe, mm. or my telescope. All of those things would give me silicon, additional silicon. So what are we going to sacrifice? I don't know. This is tough, you see. I don't I don't see what my alternatives are. Mm. The 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 yellow dwarf itself is rich in fuel, but that doesn't give me any of the the, the bits and bobs I need, does it? And mm. if I try and go to the black hole, I know that I can't get through there because it says I don't have the appropriate thing. The black hole drive, what's it? I think you're gonna have to. Have to what? I think you're going to have to sacrifice some bits and pieces to turn it into silicon. Mm. All right. Okay, well, th this will be a good example of uh, what happens when you die horribly in a roguelike. Um, damn. Okay, so in order to build the cryonics, which is what we're going to try and do, I need three bits of FE, 
uh, and one bit of silicon. The only way to get around that is my space folder. No, the space folder is the thing that makes me travel. I need that. The interplanetary reactor, which allows me to hop from planet to planet within a given star system. I totally need that. The hydrogen probe. Or the telescope. The telescope, I guess, but that's the thing that tells me what's in stars. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so as long as you just kind of figure out roughly where we need to go and then just like hold what like I don't draw know. like get a pencil and go that way that way that way right yeah sell it done I, yeah but i don't know i don't know what to do oh hello gold is a quite common element that can help create performance and electronic components i can either drop it or split it what happens if i split it oh i see i just splits it into different like a, a two over here and one over here so i can fill up more gaps all right fair enough um Ooh, I'm really stuck. I don't know what to do. I don't know the way forward. This is a drag. I still can't okay. travel there. Well, while, while you're thinking about it, um, uh, um, Apps by Superfan, Washington Cruz has come on and said, is it like FTL or is it like Star Command? It's a bit like both, really, isn't it? Sort of. I mean, FTL is more about micromanaging the troops and you're like your crew so telling them where to go mm -hmm. and what to do and repairing things as they go wrong in that in the sense of making repairs and stuff yes it feels like a ftl and it's got that same roguelike approach where you just keep traveling and then eventually you die horribly and then you have to start again from the sure. scratch but it's slightly different but you're not controlling troops it's just you so really it's just you and the ship trying to get the ship to do what you want it to do build the right components to get your ship working and traveling which is the thing i can't get it to do at the moment um okay what well, my feeling is that the moment i dismantle mm. this bit it's going to mm. say like oh you've got that bit of gear well done you uh, now you can't actually hang on go anywhere. get some more fuel now you can't go anywhere because you've just dismantled your space engine yeah and uh get, you get stuffed i think that's and we really and we really can't like dig up other pl other things I can keep mining the same planets, I guess. I, I guess it must be that. Give that a go. All right. Give all that right. a go before we really screw everything I'm up. I'm going back into orbit. My hull is getting worse and worse and worse, though. That's the problem. <sighs> That's because you're a rubbish spacecraft driver. What? It does it automatically. I cannot be held accountable for any of this. Now, all right, I'm gonna, fun fact. I'm going to probe. Okay. I'm going to probe deep. Okay, go on. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Se sexy sci-fi, I told you. Oh, no. A sudden pressure surge destroyed my probe. I'm, rubbish. I'm holding you accountable for this, Wellington. This is this is fine. Did you know Kate Mulgrew is a who played Captain Janeway on uh, Star Trek Voyager? She is now oh my wordly word. She's now 58 years old. Is she Canadian? She is from Iowa. Oh, okay, that's right. She just States sounds Canadian then. Of America, yeah. She's 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 still acting <laughs> as well. She's doing like I think she's doing uh, like um. Opera and stuff now. There you go. But she's smiling. Up I don't know how buddy. you can hate her. She's smiling away in this lovely picture of her on Wikipedia. Oh, I don't know how you can. Oh, you can't hate that face, even if she is a bit stern. I, I blatantly can. Right, I've just found some more uh, hydrogen here, so that's okay. brilliant. But okay. um, I've lost my probe, meaning I can no longer probe things, which uh, is a problem. Yeah. So All right. my, my planetary, my hydrogen probe is knackered. And uh, I need to fix it. Or so something. we're running out of options here, aren't we? We really, really are. Yeah, this is bad. Okay, okay I'm uh, going to fuel up again. Pop on. Yeah, do it. There we go. Got loads of oxygen. I'm, I'm set for oxygen. Yeah. Um, let me stack some stuff. Stack the hydrogen there, or helium, or whatever it is. Um, <sighs> this bodes ill. Let me go back to my... I reckon, I reckon, get to the point where, you know, you can't do oh! anything else. Oh. Oh. oh, done. Ship destroyed. Code red. This will be my last entry. The hull is cracking and the whole ship is losing pressure. I'm putting on a spacesuit right now to uh, survive for a couple of en extra minutes. But this is the end. May, ma may mankind find someday my logbook. The testament of one of their brothers who fought until the very end. Well, not really. Did some mining, bashed up a space <laughs> car, and then uh, and then was just like, Ooh. Oh, right, you have to oh, try this. I'm okay. dead, Twitch. I'm well dead. So, what do you do? 
what do we do now? Like, so can we, do you take on the information <laughs> you've already learned about language? Do you keep that? Do you keep anything? I, I can still speak one word of twig. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I, I've only got one choice. This is the end of my journey. I'm hitting it. And I assume I'm going to get... Right. Star systems visited five. Technologies learned none. Spaceships yeah, used work. one. Yeah. Stars destroyed none. Planets terraformed none. <laughs> Wormholes jumped. Alien, alien races discovered one. However. Right. Uh, and that's it. Now, I, let me so, go to my ship. It shows me my, my ship here. And just I, to reiterate. Yes. We could have terraformed a planet and destroyed a sun. Yeah. Or a star. Well, yeah. And what you did was smash the backlight of the, <laughs> of the Starcraft. Dinged it on a space lamp post. Dinged it. And then there was a crack in the hull, and now you're dead. Like this, uh, do you know... Should have been me doing this. <laughs> right, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because you're Soper card. Yeah, I am. I, do you know what? I am, I am about as Cisco as they come, basically. And he was pretty good. He plays jazz piano like a madman. He does, doesn't he? He really does. <laughs> All right, then. Well, I guess that's as, as good a place to end it as any. My terrible death. Now it's time for you guys. Go. Uh, go grab out there if you want to. You can find uh, the review up on App Spy, I think. The review's up. There's certainly a whole bunch of playthrough videos as well. We might put this video live too. And uh, you can go and grab it yourself. And go and be a better star captain than me, I suppose. Yeah. Lord. All right, cheers. And thanks for all the moral support there. I've been James Gilmore. That was Peter Willington. Thanks. Thanks for watching Twitch's inaugural uh, post on uh, Twitch's App Spies inaugural post on Twitch. We'll be back for more probably later in the week. Join us again. Thanks ever so much. Bye bye. Bye.